Hi everyone, uh, welcome to this session. Uh, today we would be talking about uh, transitioning from a dev to a PM role. Uh, uh, but before that, a uh, little bit about myself. Uh, my name is Sulaina Singh. I am a product manager at Microsoft. Uh, I'm working in Azure Observability, uh, but overall I have 13 years of experience in the tech industry. Um, a little bit about my journey as well. Um, I am an electronics engineering graduate, uh, and after graduating, I joined uh, the software development um, as a developer, and I have worked in uh, different spaces uh, in different companies, uh, but very exciting, uh, each of them. Uh, and then I went on to get a business education. Um, uh, I got a one year MBA. And post uh, post MBA, I have been working as a product manager in companies like Cisco and right now in Microsoft. Uh, in today's session, uh, what I would like to cover is, you know, talk about different types of PMs, what they really do, uh, and which type of PM would you be interested in based on, you know, the skills, the challenges, and uh, what each of these PMs do. Uh, I also talked about having a business education. I got a one year MBA myself, uh, but is that something that is really needed to become a PM? So that's also something that I'm going to talk about. Um, and I'm also going to share uh, a, like a plan that you can uh, you can build uh, as you are thinking of transitioning from a dev to a PM role. OK. Uh, let's uh, let's start. Uh, first thing is like the different types of PMs. I know this is not a, a full list because depending upon the industry, the domain, the size of the company, there there might be many different types of product managers there. Uh, but uh, but in general, I've tried to classify them you know, in three. The first is the technical product manager. Uh, so the technical product managers are more like domain experts or product experts and they and more often than not a technical background is uh, required or preferred uh, dpms also work very closely with the internal uh, technical team or engineering teams and the main focus is on product features uh, delivery and execution uh, the second type is the product manager uh, and here the focus is mainly on product planning, roadmap, prioritization. And a product manager works both uh, with internal uh, engineering teams as well as with customers. Uh, the third type is growth hacking or customer experience a product manager. Uh, you can also think of it as a DTM. Of course, they don't mean the same, uh, but and depending upon the size of the company, you might have uh, different PMs for each of these different areas, uh, but in general, uh, they are mainly uh, very heavily customer facing. So there are lots of customer interactions. Uh, they work with many non-technical teams, for example, your marketing or sales or other functions. Of course, for smaller companies or startups, uh, the PMs might have to be the marketing or sales themselves. Uh, but for bigger companies, there are teams and um, the PMs work very closely with, with them. Uh, they also influence the product roadmap uh, because they are customer facing. They bring those insights back to the product. Another type, another way to think of uh, PM classification is whether it's an enterprise product or it's a consumer product. So enterprise products are the ones that you sell directly to the enterprise. Uh, and consumers are directly to consumers like end users like you and me. Um, so typically for an enterprise product manager, uh, they work with, uh, they have a few very important customers who they work very closely with. So the problem discovery uh, is a little simpler uh, because you know what the customers asks are, what are they asking about? So it becomes easy to understand which features to build, build in. Uh, but in this case, the buyers and the end users can be different. And as an enterprise PM, it's very important to serve both. Uh, focus prioritization. So like I, like I said, uh, in, in case of enterprise PMs, you know what customers are asking. So it, it becomes, uh, you know, uh, uh, the, uh, it, it's very important to 
prioritize in a way that meets your customer needs rather than building something and then you know the, your customers are pissed off uh, and then stake all stakeholder custom stakeholder management is also important uh, because in this case more, more often than not you have your marketing and sales team who might have a relationship with your customers so it's you know it's very important to you know manage all these different stakeholders and keep them all aligned coming to consumer pms uh, in this case problem discovery is not that easy uh, because you know you have a wide set of uh, users uh, but which are the which are the features that you know are most important or you know can help uh, in your product strategy is something that you have to uh, you know you have to you know uh, find out or you know based on your intuition or data driven so here is where your data driven decision make, making becomes very important uh, so you focus you rely very heavily on data uh, and in case of consumer pms you can be a little you know experimental and fail fast these are great ideas uh, to execute in consumer pms now having talked about different types of pms there are few things that all pms regardless of where you are you need to do and know a uh, few things like product strategy roadmap a uh, prioritization how do you prioritize other uh, features for a product uh, customer advocacy so you have to be the customer voice uh, and customer empathy is a great quality uh, as a pm um, and in in internal business meetings uh, let's say with your leadership you have to represent the product team or the technical team but when you're meeting the internal technical team then you have to represent the business side of things or you have to represent the customer so both becomes very important uh, and then product requirement documents these are something that you know you uh, need to know okay uh, do you need a business education or mba uh, the short answer is no uh, so that is out of the window uh, but if you are considering an mba or business education it might help you uh, give you a wider perspective or it can also help you build your network uh, and especially in if you're thinking of you know growth hacking or gtm kind of pm roles then also mba might be uh, helpful but uh, it, it's not something that's mandatory okay uh, now that we have covered uh, some basics and if you're uh, if you're with me thus far and if a PM role still excites you, uh, then let me share a few ideas on how you can build a plan uh, to transition into a PM role. First, uh, you have to find the type of PM role that you're interested in, um, what aligns with your skills and aspirations. Um, I, I talked about each of the different types of PMs, what they do, is that something that you also uh, want to do? Uh, for example, uh, uh, customer facing PMs uh, talk a lot to customers. Is that something that you, know, you like doing? Uh, then uh, that's something that you have to find out. Uh, a tip there, uh, you can start with a TPM role uh, because you have the advantage of being the technical expert. Uh, and once you are a TPM, then you can explore or transition into, you know, other types of uh, a PM roles. You can explore these other types. Uh, another thing which is important is try before you buy. You're basically leaving your engineering uh, uh, career and trying to transition into something that's very new. So it's very important to get a feel of, you know, what a PM really is. And I just left a tip over there, um, like, uh, one thing you could do is you can volunteer to appear on a customer call or you can say, hey, I would like to be, I, I would like to join the customer call as an SME or a note taker uh, just to get a feel of what PMs really do and to find uh, your uh, an alignment of the type of PM uh, role that you want to get into. Uh, next is uh, prepare. Uh, so there are many concepts uh, that PMs, uh, you know, know about. I talked a bit about a few of them, uh, product strategy, roadmap, product design. So take baby steps, um, try to learn each of these concepts um, and one, one concept at a time. And when you are a bit comfortable, uh, the next step is to prepare. 
uh, and there are many different types of uh, interviews based on the type of role that you're applying so for example uh, a tip if you're applying for a tpm role then system design is something that is expected um, and you would get uh, questions on that uh, and for in general product managers uh, you get questions on product sense product design execution these are all framework based and i will leave some resources towards the end of the slide which can help you get started uh, the second type of interview is more behavioral like this is your examples for example tell me about the most successful project that you have done so think about these examples uh, and you know uh, uh, and once you are comfortable uh, with this to practice mock interviews uh, it's very important i cannot stress enough how important mock interviews are they really help you they help you set your best get you know get your best foot forward when you're going to a real interview Third is to find a mentor. Uh, it can be a mentor uh, in, in your team, uh, in your company or outside your company or a friend or, or somebody you look up to. But mentors can really help you as you navigate uh, uh, in your transition from a dev to a PM role. Uh, and I know it's hard uh, to find a mentor, but, uh, but you know I have realized more often than not, if you reach out to people, uh, and seek help, uh, people are really happy to help you. So if there's a PM in your team or somebody you know, uh, you know who you like and uh, you can just try reaching out to them and say, hey, I want to be a PM. Uh, can you help me? Can you be my mentor? And, uh, you know, you would be surprised, you know, maybe, you know, uh, they, they would be happy to help you. So do try that out. Uh, it, it's very important as you are transitioning, you, you won't feel alone in this journey. The last one is uh, brave it till you make it. Uh, I know it can be a little contestable, uh, but I, I really think this is important because at this point, you're not a PM, but you want to be one. So you have to convince others that you know you are the right person for the job. Uh, so do keep do keep telling that to yourself that uh, you know uh, this is what you uh, this is what you bring to the table. Uh, but once you are a PM. Uh, this does not apply anymore. Uh, once you are a PM, then you have to bring your authentic self. Uh, you have to learn. You have to, you know, um, uh, hustle. You have to um, do it and be authentic. And hopefully, you enjoy the whole process. Um, so that was it. Uh, uh, in short summary, I have four steps um, which you know you can um, see if you know if you can build a plan around it. First is to find the type of PM role you're interested in, uh, prepare, uh, find a mentor, and then brave it till you make it, but not after that. And as I said, a few resources that can help. Um, there are some books uh, which I felt, you know, have helped me a lot. Uh, and, you know, these are good starters. Uh, I have left some books from TP for TPM as well. Uh, and there are a bunch of online resources. Uh, that you can go to. Uh, these are more from, you know, uh, preparing for interview as well as mock interviews. So there are a whole bunch of resources out there uh, that you can try. So with that, uh, we are, you know, this is the end. We are coming to the end of the session. Uh, thank you for uh, listening and sticking around and hope you have a good day and good luck uh, for your uh, journey. Thank you.